Uh, thank you. Okay, so today's class is the the first class after the midterm exam. So how was the exam? Was it difficult or easy? <laughs> so actually I tried to uh, uh, make up so some difficult level of the midterm exam similar to the so uh, difficult level of the homework problems, then I believe the difficult level was similar to homework, right? So, uh, so I believe uh, if you could solve the homework problems by yourself, then I believe you can, you could, you was able to, uh, you, <clears throat> you were able to solve the, some uh, metamic problems, uh, not easily but <laughs> because it's the uh, exam problems, but I believe uh, you are able to solve the problems without any uh, difficulty. Okay, um, so, uh, 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 so, so please start hard for this course. Uh, so, so we are learning about the pipelining. So which means the, the process act, the basic process architecture. And then after this chapter four, so we will learn about the memory hierarchy. So this memory hierarchy is also very important topics in computer systems. So please study hard. <clears throat> you know, this course is the mandatory course of uh, uh, computer engineering department. So which means uh, this course is very uh, critical for some other courses in computer engineering department. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I believe you, you, uh, you are notified that, <clears throat> so uh, actually I posted the, the second design lab assignment. So actually the goal of the this second design lab is to uh, design the data path. So basic data path element of a processor, which we are learning uh, in this course. So actually uh, in, the, in, a, in the second lab, so you will be requested to design basic data path elements. And then in the third uh, design lab, uh, you will be requested to design single cycle process act processor, okay? And then the last design lab is about the designing, about designing uh, pipeline, the simple pipeline the risk five uh, processor, okay? So, and then I will briefly uh, explain about the second design lab, okay? So actually, the so in the <clears throat> in the previous classes we learned about the data path element. So what are the basic data path elements in the uh, single cycle processor? So uh, the basic data path elements in the single cycle processor are so registers, ALUs, and then memories like. Uh, instruction memory and uh, data memory, right? So also the multiplexes, multiplexers are uh, a kind of data path element, but you know, the multiplex, multiplexers are very small and simple uh, hardware component. So registers, ALUs, and then two memories like instruction memories and then data memories are basic data path elements in the single cycle processor. So in the, in the chapter two, uh, <laughs> chapter two, so in the second lab, so you will be requested to design these data path elements. So actually this, so the, the labs, so which means that the design lab progress is, uh, uh, design lab progresses are very similar to the some normal uh, design progress. So, the most system design progress. So, first, 
some specification like the, the input and output and then the functional behavior of uh, a functional block. So which means the database elements are given to uh, designers, hardware designers. And then the hardware designer uh, build the RTL design that can uh, reflect the given specification. So, so as I mentioned, the specification means the includes the input and output data, and then some functional behavior of the this uh, functional block, uh, like the data pass elements. Also, it includes the, some timing, such as the some delay or some number of clock cycles. So, when the when these uh, design specifications are given to a hardware designer, and hardware designer build. Uh, build the uh, RTL design. So which means that RTL design means the uh, some a design file written in Verilog or a VHDL or system Verilog. So these languages are called audio description language. So RTL design is a, so this is a code written in HD else okay so it is very similar to uh so code <laughs> so what you means the programming code so it which means so actually the recently the application codes are very complex so many engineers many software and which means uh, many software engineers are uh participate uh, many sub uh Many software engineers participate in designing these very big applications. So, but the individual engineer just focused on the small components, okay? Like the these small components of the digital system. So, which means that some specifications are given to software engineers, and then software engineer uh, build the program code that satisfies the given specifications, okay? So in the in the second lab, so you will be looking to these data pass elements like uh, registers, ALUs, and two memories, instruction and data memories. And then actually I change the, some <clears throat> these design labs every semester. So <laughs> it means that uh, our processor uh, support the more instructions uh, ev uh, every semester. <laughs> so, so in this semester, our processor will support the I type arithmetic and logic instructions also. So actually in chapter four, we are learning the very simple uh, single cycle processor that support seven risk five instructions, but it's a very <laughs> small number. So, in the design lab, in this design lab, so you will be requested to uh, design database elements that say they can support more instructions, the more risk of five instructions. So in this semester, so you you need to, uh, and I mean, so our processor needs to support the I type, so immediate type arithmetic and logic instructions, okay? But, you know, the registers, instruction and data memories, memories are the same, but we need, uh, we need to modify ALU design, okay? You know, to support the more instructions. Also, in the, in the chapter four, the, uh, the single, single cycle processor in the chapter four just to support BQ, so one branch instruction, but uh, in this, so you will be requested to des design ALU that support four different branch instructions like B and E, and then B L T and B G E. Okay, but it's simple. Okay, so. This, this is the instru instruction fetch uh, step of the single cycle processor. So if you see that this instruction fetch stage at, or instruction fetch step that we can find 
basic data path element such as the program counter, instruction memory, and adder. Okay. <clears throat> so it is like uh, add plus four. But you know, the program counter is just uh it's very similar to the deep flip flop. So working with clock signal. So it's actually it's a deep flip flop. So which means at every clock cycle, this next PC value is updated to the current PC value. So actually this deep flip flop is very simple. <laughs> so we, we can uh, design this deep flip flop uh, using maybe three to five lines of uh, very low code. Okay, it's very simple. But the instruction memory is, uh, is a rather uh, bigger than the uh, this simple uh, data pass element. Okay, <clears throat> so so if you see that this instruction memory instruction memory receives address and then generate instructions. So it means that instructions are stored in entries of this is this instruction memory, right? And then uh, the a, a certain entry in, in in the instruction memory can be indexed by address. Okay, so it means so then we can get instruction from the instruction memory. The adder is also simple. So it's like plus four. Okay, <laughs> then how can you build the instruction memory? So actually, for this design lab, I provide the incomplete design module. So, you, so for the instruction memory, then you can find the imem.sv. It's a system very low file. So, it, so extension is sv. Also, we provide the test bench file. So in the, in the first lab, so, and then you know, we, need, we require test bench file for the very simple end gate. So, so that in, in order to run, uh, in order to simulate the, our design file, then we need a test bench. So which means that for this design, so in order to verify your design, then you need to have test bench files. For this uh, second design lab, we already actually so I <laughs> I already made the uh, uh, test bench files like tb underbar i mem dot sv file. Uh, this test bench file is designed for the system value, so so it means that uh, you can simulate uh, your design module with uh, this test bench file using Cluster, okay. Also, <laughs> so so we can use the other simulator such as a uh, uh, variator. So you know, <clears throat> in the in the first lab, I also provide the instruction uh, regarding variator. Okay, so if you use the some uh, Mac Mac. So Apple computers, so, so, so computers made by, made by Apple or, so yeah. So okay, well, if you are using a Linux operating system, then you can use very later. So uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned, uh, we cannot use Cresta on Mac OS, okay? So in, the, in this case, in the case, then we can use very later to simulate our design files, okay? So for those who want to use very later for this lab, then we also provide the uh, test bench file for very later, like tb underbar imm.cpp. You know, this is the C++ test bench file. So actually very later converts our system value designed to C++ uh, code, so, okay? So, and then we can simulate our design file 
using the converted C++ files, okay? Then we also need the test bench file, so <laughs> which means that, so we can uh, write a test bench file using C++, okay? So if you use the very later, then you can use the this test bench file. And then if you want to use the Cresta, then you can use the this system very low test bench file. And then, you know, uh, this, this is the, uh, actually the provided code. So incomplete, incomplete code for instruction memory. So, you know, you can find the module name here and then, you know, uh, in this module, so this module has two ports, so one input port and one out port. So you can find the address here and then D out here. So which means if you see that this module, so instruction memory module, then you can find that, oh, this is the address. So which means that read address port in this figure is mapped to address port of the <clears throat> imm.sv. Also, this instruction port, instruction port in this figure is mapped to the D out of the, this imm design module, okay? So, you know, this is the incomplete design. So you need to fill the, this part, okay? So this is the memory. So, <laughs> so, so I, and then you can find the, some valuable comments in the, in the design file. So then you need to design your, uh, this, this, you need to complete your design file based on the uh, provided comments in the file, okay? How about the register file? So you can find also this port listing of the register file. The module name of the register file is reg file. We also provide the test bench for this register file uh, for Cresta and uh, very later. Okay, so you can find the uh, test bench files. So uh, if you see the, if you compare the some input and output ports of the these registers uh, in the in, in, in this figure, and then you, and then you can compare the more uh, input and output port list in the uh, system very log module, the reg file. So uh, the most of the ports are the same to the uh, the port in this figure, but you can find the clock signal. So, so actually you can uh, read the comments in the, in the, this, this reg file uh, design module. So also you can fill the this part and this part. So you need to complete the design for write operation. Also you need to complete the design for read operation. We already learned how register file works in the single cycle processor. So I, I will not explain again we need the clock signal actually, because if we do not use the clock signal, then we can generate the infinite combinational loop. So infinite combinational loop is like this. So it's, a, it's the combinational logic. And then this is the input and then this is the output. So the loop in the combinational logic is looks like this. So it means that output is connected to the input of the, its own uh, combinational logic. So what, what's the matter? You can think like this, it's the, uh, this is the adder, it's the input, and then this is the output. And then output is connected to the input of the, this adder. So you know, this adder is the combinational logic. So what's the matter? The problem is that the output is continuously given to the another input of the, this combinational logic. And the problem is that the data is 
accumulated again and again and again and again. So, and then we cannot control the, this accumulation without clock signal. So in order to avoid the, this uh, combinational loop in the register file, so we need to add the clock signal. And then please read the uh, lab document to, for uh, understanding how, why we need the uh, clock signal in the register file. Okay, we need to avoid the combinational loop. Okay. So and then write operation is done at the rising edge of the clock. Okay. And then data memory. So unlike the, is, so actually the data memory is different from uh, 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 the, different, different uh, compared to the instruction memory because for the instruction memory, we just have read port only, but for the data memory, we need the write port, okay? So we need the, control signals like mem read or mem write. Uh, also, you, if you compare the port list of the data memory of the this design lab two, then also you can find the oh, clock signal is included. Actually, the clock signal is included in the, this data memory module in the, same reason, okay? So which means that we need to avoid the combinational loop. So which means the write operation to data memory is enabled at the rising edge of the clock, okay? So, so you can find the write operation part here, but and then you can find that this write operation part is activated by positive edge of the clock, okay? So you need to design the read operation part. Also, you can find the, some comments regarding the, this clock signal, the, data memory and then register file design module. So please read thoroughly the comments in the design files, okay? And then another uh, base, uh, important uh, data pass element is ALU. So we need ALU in the uh, execution stage. Also we need ALU for executing uh, appropriate uh, operations of instruction. So if you see that this uh, table that defines the behavior of ALU, then you can find that oh, this table is a little bit different from the, the table in the textbook. So it, it is because the ALU in the textbook just supports, supports seven risk five instructions like load, store, BQ, and add, and, or, uh, sub, right? right? I believe. So, but, in, the, uh, in this semester, you will be requested to design the uh, risk by, simple risk by processor that support uh, more instructions. So in order to support uh, more instructions, then we need to modify ALU, okay? So our ALU needs to support load instruction and store instruction. It's the same to the textbook. And then we need to, uh, our ALU needs to support many branch instructions like BME, BEQ, and uh, uh, PQ. So like BEQ, BNE, BLT, BGE. So actually, if you see the PEQ, so that means that the equality is checked. BNE is the not equal. 
then PLT. So we need to check it up less than the PGE. We need to check it up greater than or equal to. So actually, B and E is the not of equal. So that actually, so it means that we can check the equality. And then if the two data are not equal each other, then we can say that, oh, it's the not equal. So we can actually easily check the not equal condition. But how about the PST and BGE? So we can actually check the magnitude of two different data, you know, to implement the BLT and BGE. And then actually we can check the A minus B. And then for the B, E, Q, and B, and E also we need to perform the A minus B. That's why even though our ALU supports the more branch instructions, branch instructions requires uh, branch instructions require only sub operation. So with the sub operation, we can check equality, not equal, and then less than, and then greater than or equal to. Okay. So these operations can be done by sub operation in ALU, which is the same. And then, so actually, we need to support the I type instruction, but we don't need to consider I type instructions in, in the second lab assignment. Uh, and then as you uh, actually, so in order to support the I type instructions, then we need to change control units, okay? So actually <laughs> you can find the I, uh, this modification in the homework problem, uh, homework number three, okay? And then, uh, the additional operation is the exclusive or. So in order to support the exclusive or instruction, then you need to, the ALU needs to support exclusive or operation. So actually this part is included in the, this new ALU design, okay? So you can find, so actually opcode, if you see the opcode field, you can find that if the I type arithmetic or logic instructions are given to the processor, the OP code, OP code of the I type instruction is the 001, 0011. Okay. So, it, but it should be considered in the third design map. So, so actually, I, I did not post the, this. Uh, PowerPoint file in the Blackboard. Okay. Mm. So, uh, in order to support the, actually, so this is the ALU design for the second design app. Uh, so you can find that, so actually in the textbook, you cannot find the sign port but we need that is a sign port for supporting PLT and PGE, okay? So actually for the BEQ, we just require only zero output. So zero need, uh, actually uh, for the zero output port of the ALU, check the zero of ALU result, right? Then what is the sign? Sign port just check the sign of ALU result, okay? And then in order to support the additional PLT and then PG instruction, we require this sign port from ALU, okay? So you can find the uh, port list here, of, of port list of ALU design here, okay? So sign port is newly included in the ALU port. Okay. So actually I did not post this, uh, this slide on the Blackboard because I 
posted the the lab document on the blackboard so you can find the uh, the second lab design lab document in the in the blackboard so you can if you download the uh, compressed file on the design lab number two then you can find the uh, lab document actually so actually this part <laughs> these contents are already explained in on the uh, design lab document Okay. Any questions, guys? Any questions about uh, design app? Okay. And then if you have trouble uh, doing the design map uh, assignment, then you can visit you can visit TAs or you can uh, you can stop by me. So, so you know, so some students are not familiar with uh, using uh, EDA two called the, such as the Questa. Also, I believe some students are not familiar with using uh, Linux operating system and uh, uh, very later uh, uh, something like that. So if you have trouble doing uh, this design lab assignment, then you can visit uh, TAs. Uh, uh, they are willing to help uh, students, okay? So <laughs> please, <laughs> please visit TAs. So you can stop by me uh, by appointment. So you can, uh, you can visit my office uh, by appointment so you can visit TA's office. So you know, the TA's office is uh, in Guzong Ho 401C. So this is the TA's office. Okay. So please, please visit TA's if you have trouble doing uh, design maps. Any questions? Okay. So in the previous class, we learned how to design a pipeline processor. So we start actually, so we started from the single cycle processor Okay, so this, you know, the, this is the, uh, so, uh, the figure of the single cycle processor design. And then in order to uh, implement the pipelining in the processor, then we just split the, some steps in the single cycle processor. So actually in this course, you are learning about the five stage pipeline the processor. So which means that every stage uh, support the, every step of uh, executing instructions. So like the instruction fetch, instruction decoding, execution memory, and write back. So the first step of designing pipelining is split the entire design, okay? So we can split the, the, uh, the single cycle processor design into five steps, like, like five instruction fetch, instruction, I, in, instruction decoding, execution, memory, and write back, okay? So, and then we learned that, so in order to this, in, implement pipelining, we need pipeline registers. So. And then I explained that pipeline registers are just deeply flops. So which means that the output of the or certain stage is given to the pipe deeply flops like the pipeline registers. And then at the rising edge of the clock, this output is given to the next stage. So which means that the output is sampled at the rising edge of the clock, and then this output is 
reflected to the next stage. So which means that this signal becomes the input of next stage. Understand? So it's very important. So which means that so in the single cycle processor, then we need to complete the uh, all required steps within single clock cycle, right? So from this, so we need to complete uh, required steps within the clock period. So in, in the in the pipelining processor, then we we can just complete the one operation of one stage within one clock period. So, you know, so if we just use the single cycle processor, then the delays are added. So, uh, and then so, so delays of these uh, data pass elements should be accumulated. And then these accumulated delays becomes the, the critical uh, delay uh, of the single cycle processor, so which means that the clock period of the single cycle processor should be longer than the, this longest delay. But if we end up in the pipeline the processor, so we, we need to just consider the delay of the single stage. So, you know, this, 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 this delay is shorter than the accumulated delay of all required steps which means that the clock, cy clock cycles can be shorter than the clock, uh, clock cycle of the single cycle processor is shorter than the clock cycle of the, oh no, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So clock cycle of a pipeline processor is shorter than the clock cycle of single cycle processor, okay? So, which means that clock frequency is higher. So, and then I explain how the pipeline uh, pipeline stage works in the this five stage pipeline processor. Uh, so, and then uh, you, you know the actually. The single cycle processor is very simple is because uh, every, in the, every cycle, the instruction is fetched and completed. So this fetching and completion of instruction is completed within one clock cycle. But a pipeline processor is different. So which means that the instruction is fetched in the clock cycle number one, and then the execution of this instruction is completed in clock cycle number five. So which means that the timing of the time, timing of uh, execution of instruction in the pipeline processor can be a, a little bit tricky, okay? So in order to understand the timing of the pipeline processor, then you can use the pipeline diagram, pipeline timing diagram like this. So, so if you see that this diagram, then you can easily understand how instructions are uh, being processed in a certain uh, pipelining stage. So for example, if we just see the first instruction, like load instruction, so, so we can find that oh, load instruction is fetched at clock cycle number one, Okay, so CC means the clock cycle. And then at clock cycle number two, then load instruction is in the ID stage. And three, EX, four, memory, and then five, it's in the right back stage. How about the next instruction? So this is the next instruction of the, this the load instruction. So Sub instruction is fetched at clock cycle number two. So this is the instruction fetch, and then instruction decoding, blah, 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 the right back. So if you see that this uh, pipelining, pipeline diagram, then you, you can 
understand how instructions are processed at which clock cycle number. Okay. Yes. Uh, we can easily uh, represent uh, this pipeline diagram with <laughs> like this. So I usually use the uh, this format for uh, representing a pipelining diagram. And then if you just focus on the a single cycle, then we can find that many instructions are being processed, you know, in this processor. So what, what does that mean? So actually this is the, this axis is the time, right? So if we just focus on this time, like clock cycle number five, then we can find that the load instruction is in the right backstage, and then sub instruction is in the memory stage, add is in the ex, blah, blah, blah. So which means that if we just focus on a certain time, then we can find that multiple instructions are being processed. But the, these multiple instructions are in the different stages of a pipeline the processor, but we can say that multiple instructions are being processed, okay? So we can say that multiple instruction are running. So we just focus on a single cycle, then we can observe that, oh, the load is in the right backstage, so memory add ex, another load is the id, the add in the instruction fetch stage, okay? And then we can represent the uh, pipeline the processor timing like this, we just focus on the single cycle, then we can find that many different instructions are being processed in a processor, in this processor. So what does that mean? Multiple instructions are running. It's called instruction level parallelism, okay? So which means in the processor, the multiple instructions are being processed. So we can increase throughput, okay? So we can increase throughput with instruction level parallelism. And then pipeline the processor implements instruction level parallelism, okay? So, uh, so until now, we just focus on the, the flow of instructions in the pipeline architecture, right? So, and then we need to consider control signals. So think like this, think like this. When we, when we learned about the single cycle process of design, then we start from the data path element. So, and then we build the data path in the single cycle processor. And then we found that uh, these single, these data path elements have control port. So, which means we need to generate the control signals. So, we design control units in the single cycle processor. And it's the same to the pipeline architecture. Until now, we just focus on the flow of instructions, like the which instruction is in at in which stage in the pipeline process. So then we need to con consider the control signals in the pipeline processor. So like the single cycle processor design, the data path elements in the sing 
uh, pipeline processor also have control port. It's the same. So it's the same data path element, right? So there are some control port in the data path element, then we need to generate control signals. Then how? So in the so in the single cycle processor, we can generate control signals by using instructions, right? Uh, uh, yeah. So, okay. here is the single cycle processor. Uh, oh, I cannot find the single cycle processor uh, design here. So, in the single cycle processor design, then there, there was a control unit here, and then we can generate control signals. So it's just control unit here. And then we can generate control signals by using instructions. Okay, so you can find that the instruction is connected to the control unit, but we, we can just use the OP code of an instruction like inst zero down to zero. Uh, six down to zero, sorry. So this is the OP code of instruction, right? And then, so by using instruct, uh, OP code of an instruction, then we can generate required control signals like uh, leg right, ALU source, uh, like branch, mem, mem write, mem read. Okay. And how can we use the instruction? So actually the instruction is fetched in the instruction fetch stage. So it means that in the instruction fetch stage, we don't know <laughs> which instruction is will be being executed in, the, in this processor. So, so we can get instructions from instruction memory in the instruction fetch stage, but we can get instruction at the later part of the clock period. So, which means that mm, after delay of the, this instruction memory, then we can get an instruction. So, and then th this instruction is generated the later part of the clock cycle. So we cannot use the, this instruction. So this is the instruction. And then at the rising edge of the clock, this instruction is sampled by instruction fetch and ID pipeline register, right? So this is the, becomes the instruction, which will be executed by this processor. So what does that mean? We can use this instruction. And then, you know, the control unit also requires instruction, like instruction six, bin number six down to zero is required for generating control signals. So it means that we can have control unit in the ID stage because we can get instruction in the ID stage. Then control signals are generated. So, you know, actually the output of, so if we just uh, consider the input and output of a processor, then input and output of a single cycle processor, and then pipeline the processor is the actually same. Why? Because uh, when I uh, explain about the 
some definition of a, a processor, then I define a processor like this. So instruction is given, then some states are changed by instructions. So this delay is not considered by instruction set architecture. So a processor can just uh, generate the defined result. So result defined by instru instruction set architecture manual, which means that the output, the output of a single cycle processor is actually is equivalent to the output of a pipeline processor. But one thing is different. What is different? Timing. The timing is just different. So this means that the pipeline processor is faster than the uh, single cycle processor, right? So what does, what does that mean? Actually, actually, the control unit received the same instruction. Then this control unit generates the same control signals, then these co generate the control signals are the same to the control signals of single cycle processor. Understand? So actually the control unit is the same. Then different is, the, so what is different is Timing, timing of control signals. So if you see the control port of the uh, data pass element in the pipeline the processor, then you can find that, oh, this reg write is in the ID stage. So actually the reg write is connected to the register file, but reg write signal is required in right the backstage, right? Right, right. So, and then if you see the uh, another con uh, other control signals such as ALU source, then you can find that, oh, this ALU source is in the EX stage. Uh, and then also we already know that ALU source is required for deciding the input of the ALU. So which means that ALU source is required in the EX stage. And then mem write and mem read are required in the memory stage. And then it's so a write back. So what does that mean? Actually, the control unit is the same. So it's a, the control unit of the pipeline the processor is the same to the control unit of the single cycle processor. And then this, this control unit will generate the same control signals. But the timing of when the control signal is required is different. Understand? So as I explained, or oh, ALU source is required in the EX stage. Memory write and memory read are required in the memory stage. And then reg write is required in the write back stage. Also, mem to reg is required in the write back stage. Which means we need adjust the appropriate timing of control signals. How? Control signals also pass through the pipeline registers, okay? So this figure explains how the control signals propagate through the pipeline registers. So 
In this figure, if a certain control signals are used in the right back stage, then this, these control signals pass through the uh, the EX pipeline register and then EX mem pipeline registers and right back EX memory right back pipeline register. So these control signals have the same timing in the of the right back stage. How about the control signals used in the memory stage? Well, these control signals was you know to uh, set the, uh, some appropriate timing for these control signals, then these control signals pass through the ID EX stage and then EX memory stage pipeline registers. Okay, and then is, these signals are used in the memory stage. These are the same. What does what that mean? We can just make make the uh, if the a certain control signal is used in a a certain uh, pipeline stage, then we can pass these control signals through the pipeline registers. So by doing this, we can make the control signals or uh, timing of the control signals. Uh, to the some stage of the instructions, okay? So you can think like this, okay? Control signals are also propagated. So this is the uh, completed pipeline, pipeline duct, not completed. <laughs> so we need another, another uh, uh, control units like the of data folding unit or hazard detection unit. But if we just consider the control unit of the pipeline the processor, then this is the some control pass in the pipeline processor. So you can find that, oh, well, this is the control unit of the pipeline the processor. And then this control unit receives the instruction in the ID stage. So, in the pipeline architecture, we need to mention the, <clears throat> the state, the <clears throat> name of the stage. So which means that oh, control unit is in the ID stage and then control unit receives instruction in the ID stage. Then generate the control signals. And then some control signals like the uh, mem to red and then leg right, these control signals are used in the right back stage. So these control signals pass through until the right back stage. So you know, leg right is comes from leg right comes from the output of memory right back pipeline register. Okay. Also, you can find that because mem to reg is required in the right back stage, this control signal is, this control signal comes from memory right back pipeline register. Do you understand? And this is actually very important in the pipeline architecture design. So in the pipeline design, timing of control signals and then timing of data should be matched. So which means that oh, our instruction is in the right back stage. So then, then so we need to use the control signals, which is as the some matched timing, which has the has met the matched timing with the this data in the right back stage, okay? So it means that so these control signals are delayed, uh, passed through the pipeline registers, okay? But you can just remember that uh, if a uh, certain data or control signals are 
used in a certain stage, then these data and control signals are delayed by pipeline register. So which means that pass through the pipeline register until the this destination stage. That is the main uh, design uh, concept of a pipeline uh, architecture. Understand? Okay. Uh, so until this part, we uh, learned about how the data, data so required required data such as the instructions or the address of, and then the result of the instructions are passed to the pipeline registers. Also, we learned how control signals are delivered to the target stage in the pipeline architecture. Okay, so just to remember that a certain data and controls signals are used in a certain stage, then we need uh, we need to deliver this, these data and control signals until the destination stage through pipeline register, okay? Because we need to set the appropriate timing of the data and control signals, okay? And Hazel, so when we cover the overview of pipeline architecture, then we I just mentioned the data hazard. So, so we need to consider data hazard in the pipeline architecture because so we can find data dependencies between uh, multiple instructions, and then we need to uh, handle the these data dependencies. Okay, so how can we handle data dependencies? The first, we can avoid data hazard using forwarding. And then we cannot avoid data hazard if the formal instruction is load instruction. So in this case, we need store pipelines. So it means that the next instructions cannot be executed until the, this data hazard is resolved, okay? So we need to handle, oops, data hazard. If formal instruction is load, So our pipeline processor needs to support data forwarding and then handling data hazard, okay? So until now we learned how the control or data control signals and the data are propagated in the pipeline architecture, but we cannot find any uh, processing or some controlling of data hazard. So. In this, in this, not chapter, <laughs> in this section. So we will learn how to implement data folding and data hazard handlers, okay? Okay. So if you see that this example that you can find that, oh, this is the uh, producer of the uh, some result now, and then this the result of the this server instruction is stored in X2, the register number two. And then you can find that following instructions use the result of a server instruction like and or add and store instruction. So, and then we already learned that if the data dependency is observed, then we can avoid data hazard with data forwarding, okay? So which means that the result of sub-instruction is delivered to the 
end, the next end instruction, because the end instruction needs to use the X2, data in X2, and then also the following overall instruction needs to use the result of X2, and the following add instruction also use, uses X2, the data X2. Then how can we implement data folding in the pipeline processor? So the timing is very important in the type, <laughs> pipeline processor. So this is, uh, you, you can find the same inst instructions here, the y-axis is a column of this timing table. So you can find the, oh, this is the clock cycle number. So it's, it's, so which means the time. So, you know, and this sub instruction is executed in the pipeline, the processor, the final result is written back to the register five at clock cycle number five, right? But as I explained in the, in the previous class, I believe uh, you, can, uh, you can remember. So actually this result, so this result for sub instruction is generated in EX stage. So which, and then actually the later part of the EX stage, so which means we can use the result of sub instruction after clock cycle number three. So at this point, after this point, then our pipeline processor already have result of sub instruction. And which means that this result can be forwarded to the required data pass element, okay? So the following end instruction, so the end instruction actually require the result of sub instruction in the EX stage of end instruction, right? So, you know, the EX stage of end instruction is the future of the EX stage of the sub instruction, right? Because it's a CC4. So we can fold this, the, the result, result of sub instruction to the input of ALU at 64, right? How about the OR? So when the OR, so OR instruction also requires the result of sub instruction at clock cycle number five. And then at clock cycle number five, actually the, the result of this add instru and sub instruction is in the EX, oh, this is the memory right back pipeline register. So we can find the result of sub instruction is in the memory and write back pipeline register. So which means we can forward this result to the input of the ALU. Then how about the add instruction? So actually add instruction try to read register from in the ID stage, right? And then at this clock cycle number five here, what? And then at the same time, the sub instruction try to write result to the register file. Uh, but in this case, the we can, the we assume that this register file support internal folding. So which means that, so actually this is the RS1 and RS2, actually. so X, X2, and then the sub instruction is writing, writing X, some data to the X2. So in this case, this data can be forwarded to the output of the read 
data one or read data two. So this is called the internal folding. So which means that at clock cycle number five, sub is writing data to the register file. And at the same time, the add is reading data from the register file. And if the this write, write register number is same to the read register numbers, then the, the, read, the data which is being written to the register can be forwarded to the output of register file. So this is the internal folding. And then we assume that uh, our register file supports the internal folding. So which means at clock cycle number five, the data can be, so add instruction can read data from register file. How about the, this store instruction? So you know the store instruction read data from register file at clock cycle number six. And then the data is already written back to the register file at clock cycle number five. So it means that the store instruction can read data from the register file. So which, which is just already stored in the register file. So what does that mean? We assume that if the this uh, register read, the timing of the register read is same to the timing of the register write, then we can support the, we assume the register file support internal folding. But for this case, the end and or instruction, the result of server instruction should be folded from the pipeline registers. Okay, so which means we need to implement the this data folding path in the our pipeline architecture. Okay, then how can we? So, so which means so we need to implement. Folding path. And then we need to control data folding. So data folding should be activated if data folding is required. So what does that mean? So which means that we need to know the conditions for data folding. But it's simple, right? We can, we can figure out when the data folding is required. So we can just compare the destination register number of the former instruction and the source, in, source register numbers of following instructions. So this is the starting point. So first we need to define the data folding conditions. Okay, and then we need to implement data folding path. Okay, and then based on the conditions and then a data folding path, we need to generate the control signals for data for okay so which is the required steps for designing data folding unit in the pipeline processor okay so so just to remember the required steps for designing data folding units in the pipeline processor so I think we need, I need to st stop here and then, so, and then we will cover uh, how to design data folding unit and then how to design uh, hazard det detection unit in the pipeline processor. So this can be a little bit uh, tricky because, so you, you know, the pipeline processor architecture is uh, 
as more complex than the single cycle processor design. Also, we need to consider the data folding or data hazard in the pipeline processor, which is, so we, we do not need to consider this type of hazard in the single cycle processor, but in the, in the pipeline processor, <laughs> we need to consider. That's why the pipeline processor is it's a, it's a more complex and then it's uh, the uh, more, it's a little bit tricky uh, to understand how the, the pipeline processor works in the, uh, <laughs> how, how, how the pipeline processor works. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, do you have any questions? Okay, uh, thank you for your attention and then see you in the next class and then I will, we, we will uh, provide the in-person lecture in the uh, next class. So, I mean, the following classes, okay? Uh, thank you guys, and then see you in the next class.